Hello and welcome to Hughes Ellard. My name is Gary Jeffries. I wanted to provide some information about a very important issue for any landlord regarding the condition of their property. Recent economic events have made it more important than ever for landlords to ensure that they are protected from breach of covenant by a tenant, thus protecting the value of their asset. The tough times of late have shown us that the tenant's covenant to repair is becoming greatly neglected, which of course affects the condition of the property. Many leases contain a clause which enables the landlord to enter the premises during the lease term and complete the works themselves, recovering the costs as a debt rather than as damages. This is typically known as a Jarvis and Harris clause after the prominent legal case. In order for the landlord to be successful in his action, it is important that he follows the strict wording of the clause. The landlord must serve a repairs notice, identifying the specific breach of covenant and requesting that the tenant undertakes the necessary remedial works within a specified timescale, usually two months. Should the tenant fail to complete the works within the specified period, then the landlord may enter the premises to complete the works. The Jarvis and Harris clause may also cover breach of covenant of maintenance and decoration. However, the landlord must be careful that in completing the works, they only carry out that which is covenanted by the tenant where the landlord takes the opportunity to make use of his contractor to carry out additional works or to improve or put in better condition than originally demised, the tenant would be obliged to pay for the costs specifically relating to their breach only. Since the cost of works are recovered as a debt and not as damages, the landlord not only benefits from avoiding the restrictions imposed by the Leasehold Property Repairs Act of 1938, but also the limitations imposed by Section 18.1 of the Landlord and Tenant Act of 1927, meaning that the cost of the works is not capped and proof of the diminution in value of the reversion is not necessary. Though it would appear that all favours the landlord, there are some disadvantages in implementing a Jarvis and Harris clause. These are, firstly, the landlord has to pay for the works initially, and of course there's no guarantee that the costs will be recovered with any great speed, and this is especially true in cases of tenant bankruptcy. Secondly, landlord works within the demise premises could lead to counterclaims from the tenant for breach of the landlord's covenant for quiet enjoyment and for the use of power and water supplies. For this reason, it is more typical that the clause is used for breach of covenant relating to external repairs, maintenance or decoration. Given the nature of the approach, the tenant may view the service of the repairs notice as peaceful forfeiture of the lease by the landlord and vacate the premises, leaving the landlord with no income. In short, whether you are a landlord or tenant, familiarity with your lease will provide a greater understanding as to your obligations and entitlements. As one of the South's leading commercial property consultants, we are able to assist in all matters relating to this type of issue. Please call us now on 01329 220033 to find out more.